Bună ziua, doamnelor și domnilor. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And this is, uh, I think, the last session in English for uh, for today. Um, I have to admit that I met Mr. Uh, Francesco Bonfilio uh, at one of the conferences uh, at uh, European level, at uh, organized by European CIO Association. And I have to admit that uh, I was really impressed that uh, about the project which I think some of you, or maybe even majority of you know, and uh, the project named it's Gaia X. This is a European project, and it relates with the um, data sovereignty. Gaia, Gaia X, and I, I like to read directly from the website. It's a project initiated by Europe for Europe and beyond. Representative from business, politics, and science from Europe and around the globe are working together hand in hand to create a federated and secure data infrastructure. Companies and citizens will collate and share data in a such a way that they could keep control over them. So Francesco, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, we are more than happy to listen to you, to understand what is all behind this uh, uh, very important project, Gaia X, and what is actually in it for Romanian CIOs and actually for all the business um from romania yeah thank you thank you Hugo. thank you for inviting me and i'm very glad to be here and sorry for 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 being possibly the last one speaking in english or forcing everybody to listen to a different language so uh very briefly um there's a lot to say and there's a lot on the website and Hugo was very very uh smart uh reading what what's in it because there's a lot that you can learn and i would not let me say, spend too much time in going through all the details. But what I wanted to do was uh, spend some time on a, on a small deck, and I'll try maybe to skip some of the slides to give you some key messages that you can easily remember. So what we are, where we are, and also a little bit of a, a glimpse uh, into the future of uh, what GAIAX will be in a short while. So let me share my screen and um, and see uh, whether we can start this nice trip together. So I hope you can see my slides and in case somebody will tell me, otherwise I will quickly jump into who we are. So our story in short. It's okay, go on. Thank you. Now, our mission, this is what we want to do. We want to implement um, a new digital infrastructure that enables an ecosystem of innovation. We need innovation in Europe. We have a gap to fill, let's be honest, and we need to do it very quickly. We want to build data sovereignty. What data sovereignty means is getting control on your data, getting control on the digital infrastructure that manage the data, and, and data sovereignty does not mean political sovereignty. Political sovereignty, which can be applied by a nation or Europe or a continent, or even by any individual, is your specific decisions and self-determination on how you want your data to be used, where you want them to be stored, uh, who you want to, to, to get access to them, what they can be used for. Sovereignty stays to digital, uh, technologies and digital platforms exactly like to your money when you put in a bank and you want to make sure that you and only you have control of it and you have the full transparency on what your money is being used for. We want to reduce the dependency from known sovereign technologies. And unfortunately, we are mainly, if not totally at times, dependent from non-European technologies nowadays. And also we need to increase the level of transparency that uh, digital platforms and digital technology has in order to enable the move to the cloud, the move to the digital transformation that we need to implement in Europe. So uh, our reason is that we want to move from a traditional model of cloud, which is concentrated uh, proprietary in most of the cases, and very much opaque is a black box. We want to move into a new model, which is distributed. Why? Because data are distributed. Data is no more uh, something you can concentrate in one's, one place. The, even as big as, as the 
place can be, data need to be distributed and computing need to be distributed. This is the new era of the cloud. It's distributed cloud computing. We want it to be open, not proprietary. Why we want it to be open? Because with an open cloud, you can have interoperability. With proprietary technology, you cannot have interoperability. And interoperability means the possibility to move from here to there to change your decision in time and to operate your data where they are instead of moving them uh, around because you can interoperate processes and data regardless of their location. And also we want it to be transparent. In other words, we want to be able to see under the hood who is doing what with our data. In a simple word, we want to move from letting someone controlling our data to getting back control of our data. This is what we mean by trust and sovereignty. And everybody's talking about trust and sovereignty in Europe now. This is our meaning of trust and sovereignty. Our model and the X of the Gaia X you, is the one you see in this slide. On the upper part of the X, you have the data, system, the data ecosystems. What are them? Those are the data spaces that describe any physical ecosystem. It can be an industrial ecosystem, a political, uh, um, a transportation, uh, an healthcare ecosystem, whatever ecosystem can be translated into data. These data are the data, uh, the so-called data space that represent that ecosystem. On the bottom side of the X, we have the infrastructures, the cloud, the private, the public, the hybrid, the edge, the, compute, the, the high performance computing, whatever technology that is used to host and manage those data. In the middle, those four uh, yellow boxes you see are one of the core deliverables of the GAIA-X projects. They are called federation services. You see, we are developing federation services for identity and trust management. So you get to know who is providing a service exactly and the composition of that service. You, sovereignty, so that you can control the service you're using catalog so that you can search and find for the service you are looking for with exactly the characteristics you want and compliance so that you can be ensured that the service you're using is compliant to the requirements that you have decided. So this is the X of the Gaia X. The Gaia word is of course the godness of fertility because we want to make the European economy of data uh, flourish. So if you want to remember Gaia X, we want to make it flourish through this X, this new transition into a new generation of data infrastructures. This is what we do. We specify Gaia X. So we deliver a technical architectural document, which you can find on the website. We deliver an architecture of standard. It is another document that describes the applicable standards that any Gaia X service will comply to. And we deliver the policies and rules. If you want the terms and conditions that will apply to any GAIAX service. This is the specification side of the, of the work we do. Then we develop GAIAX. In other words, we have an open source project to develop a reference implementation of GAIAX. So we develop the code for it, and we de develop also the code for the regulation services. So the so-called regulation by automation, this is our say, the, 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 the code that we'll use, that will be used to self-control the Gaia X uh, infrastructure itself. Third, we deliver the labels. So we define a qualification processes, process, we define qualification labels, and we define, let me say, uh, a labeling infrastructure, which is going to be based by, uh, is going to be based to, um, onto a uh, digital ledger to record the services, and ensure they are not uh, modified or corrupted by any, any means. So we specify and develop and qualify what GAIA-X is in terms of services. Where we are, now we are 300 members, 25 countries, 15 national hubs. Uh, we are missing Romania, actually, I'm looking forward for Romania as one of the next. We have two, more than 20 working groups across the globe and more than 2000 people working in parallel. Um, all these people are working on one mission. So developing this new generation of cloud infrastructure, which is transparent, sovereign, and interoperable. We have a mix of users and providers of technology. We have a mix of 
small medium business, startups, and large enterprises. And we have a mix of countries. This is the first unprecedented example of how Europe can get together to be the voice of the market and explain what we want and develop it and propose it. We are a completely private association funded only through the, the subscription of our members. We get no subsidies, no grants from any public administration of member states or the European Commission. In this way, we can be uh, influential, we can be autonomous, and we can really change. We can really uh, try to change the world we live in in, uh, in the way we want. So in terms of where we are today, 21 was, the, let me say, uh, the, the initiative started in 2019 as a governmental initiative from Germany. Then it became Franco Germany, but actually started as an association, so open to everybody in 2020. So we are pretty young as, a, as an organization, but we have done already a lot. Uh, in 2021, so this year, we have set up a management team, including myself. I think we did a good job. We have a, a group of very good professionals supporting all the association activities. We have enabled the, the, the working group. We have several working groups, like I said, more than 20 working together to work on the same page. It's a big endeavor you can imagine to do that. If we created national hubs. We, we did well, we are 15. We want to achieve more than 20 by the end of the year and on and on. We are creating a lot of visibility not many knew about GAIA-X even just one year ago, and I think now all around Europe and the world uh, know what we are doing and are following carefully uh, our, process, our project uh, evolution. We are developing data spaces, which are projects that create data spaces based on this GAIA-X principle. We get the full alignment with the European Union uh, entities like the European Commissions and the member states' governments and we produce deliverables. So we are in progress and I think we are doing pretty well. Also in terms of uh, the five years outlook, 2021 is the year of the setup. 2022 is gonna be the year of adoption where we create the first catalog, the first marketplaces of services. 23 will be the growth where we will see a growth of these GAIA-X Federation services created by our members and, and not only members. And 24 will be the year of expansion. And 25, uh, I think we will reach a level where we compete with non-European players. In other words, the five years outlook is that we push as the ASBL for the first half of these five years. And then if we did well, the market will pull and uh, any digital initiative will work like that. And we, uh, we are sure GAIA-X will be no difference. Now we have developed, uh, as per what concerns our objective of this year, we have developed a technical architectural document, third release, which is gonna be released in a few weeks by the end of this month. We have started uh, a very big project for developing the Federation Services, the GAIA-X Federation Services, the GXFS. We have already developed the specification and we have started the development, but also we have started a very big a data space uh, project, which is called Catena X, which groups together players like Volkswagen, BMW, um, uh, Daimler, uh, Bosch, Siemens, uh, and many other players, around 100 of players all across the supply chain of automotive to share their data and build better products with better quality, with lower cost, with, with shorter time to market and creating new uh, services based on data. So this was an initiative started from the, the private uh, sector and, uh, and, uh, and also supported by the, the BNWI, the Ministry of Economy and Finance um, and Energy in Germany. So some news uh, just for you to know, which might be interesting. Um, there is a positioning paper around data spaces you can read on the, on the website that might be interesting. It's one of the examples of the outcomes we are delivering. It's a 180 pages document with 45 use cases in 10 data spaces. This is the result of the work that our hubs are doing. Uh, more than five different uh, regional hubs have worked together to develop this position in paper. But there's a lot of new papers you can find on the website to understand more about GAIA-X. And another interesting news is that we are gonna have our yearly summit, the second summit in November, 18th, 19th, uh, 
it is going to be broadcasted from Milan, but of course it's going to be a, um, a, an online event where I hope a, every one of you will, uh, will attend. It's open and of course we, we are waiting for all of you. So I will not go through the funding, but just to let you know that we are not funding projects. We are not subsidized by uh, any government. So you might ask yourself, so how do you do the job? First of all, we have 300 members and thousands of people working for free around all this technical table to develop the things I told you. Second, many governments and the European Commission see GAIA-X as the unique and most concrete project to develop the next generation cloud and technology infrastructure in Europe. So we are working to monitor all the funding opportunities. We communicate to our members about these opportunities. We collect interest from our members we help them creating consortia. We endorse those consortia and help those consortia preparing the proposals. And in this way, we make sure that the next projects of, trans of digital transformation of Europe take advantage of the best companies from any countries uh, that get together, create GAIAX proposals that we endorse. And in this way, we help our members. We help uh, you know, small and medium, uh, companies talking to large ones. We, we have small regions to talk to large regions and we help the governments in making sure their money are well spent in one direction. This is already uh, a reality. We have hundreds of millions already invested in GAIA-X related projects. We are not getting those money, but we are helping our members to um, make proposals on those money because the outcome of those projects will build the GAIA-X dream. So a step into the future, some may ask, okay, what the hell is this? So let's make it simple. It's just a simplified view. What can GAIAX look like? Think about a multi-cloud environment, multi-regional, where several players get together from different countries using different technology, and they use the GAIAX Federation services to create these interoperability and transparency services such that they can be uh, those services can be published into a set of decentralized components that provide for the verification, the consistency of the service and the verification of the attributes of that service. And then these services can be inspected, can be certified. This certification is written into a registry and a label can be applied because that certification has occurred at technology level. In other words, we make evident through our label the technical verification of any attribute that today is simply unknown, not visible, not transparently visible, or self-declared by the provider. We will make it transparent and visible, and we will open uh, GAIAX to any technology uh, that wants to be inspectable, verifiable, and wants to publish the services using our descriptors. How does that work? Pretty simply, there will be one descriptor format, there would be a test for, let me say, uh, consistency. In other words, the language of the format is correct. And then we will verify the content of the descriptor. So can we inspect those attributes via API or not? And if yes, how do we do that? Can we go through certification um, uh, authority to verify that? Or can we do through external services to do that? Or can we use our own uh, verification test? And according to that, we can build an attribute uh, compliance metric. So we know exactly that everything that has been declared by a service is true or not based on what type of verification method. Then we can also apply a label matrix and every label will, will be a combination of different attributes. And in this way, we create end-to-end -end a trust chain. Another example, uh, what are the data spaces about what do, how do they relate with infrastructure very easily the data space are concrete example on how to use data in the real economy in the industry in the healthcare in the transportation in the finance insurance etc so the more project we have the more we have the chance to develop the cloud services underlying those data spaces because they will be the same and therefore we will have uh, the opportunity to build specific vertical uh, GAIAX services that implement those data space needs. But as well, 
we will, we will have the chance to build more and more federated cloud service providers that can provide a federated offering across Europe. And in this way, we can build a critical mass and create a real offering of cloud service provider across Europe that is comparable to the hyperscalers that today are dominating this market with their um, critical mass. So I will pause here because I think that that was fast and I gave you a lot of information. Nonetheless, there's a lot more to say, but possibly five minutes of Q&A will be interesting. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Francesco. Very uh, uh, fruitful insight. So uh, let me just uh, uh, challenge you with, uh, with a question, which I know the answer, but <laughs> just for, uh, for everybody else. So uh, is it Gaia-X a project that uh, is somehow a reaction to the American tech giants? Well, it, it is not a reaction to the tech giants. As, and you have to know that tech giants are part of the project, by the way, are sitting around the table. But of course, the tech giants have created a, a monopolism of technology that you cannot beat, uh, let me say, trying to cut them off. This is not the way. But as well, you, you cannot ignore. Because to be honest, if we are dependent, if our life, our, our work, our job is dependent on digital platforms, and everybody have, have learned the hard way this lesson in this year and a half, we cannot live without some sort of sovereignty. And sovereignty means simply you have to apply the same laws that you and me and every citizen in every civil society respect to the technology because the technology is becoming as important as our life. So nowadays, we don't have that level of regulation. We don't have technologies that allows for that level of inspectability in the very same way you show your passport when you arrive to an airport. And if your passport is not reporting the right data, it's not reporting sufficient data, it's not readable, you don't go through. And I think that we're just simply doing what, what everyone would expect to be done with the technology. Possibly a little bit too late. Yes, that's true, but it's never too late to do these things. Let me just uh, uh, directly, what, what's in it for a company that would like to join uh, Gaia X for a Romanian company, for instance? Well, there's a lot. Uh, and uh, forget about the technology for a while. The story I told you is a big, big story of cooperation. I think I've not seen, I mean, my 30 years of experience, I've not seen such an engaging uh, initiative where everybody of every size, of every country, of every, from every business is so willing to work together with others. Because this means, you know, sharing ideas, maybe sharing intellectual properties, uh, but the, the common good is huge. Now, you can imagine that Romania... Uh, might have the chance to sit at the table where we are discussing the largest project across Europe and beyond, because we are not just thinking about Europe. But this is a unique opportunity for a smaller country. But think about small companies. And this is true not just in Romania. The, 90, the 85 percent of the economic fabric across Europe is small, medium business. So these small companies and even startups are sitting at the table with large giants of system integration of technology providers, and they are contributing. And this is a unique opportunity. Again, uh, let's call it lobbying. Let's call it connection. Let's call it proactive working to make proposals. And this is the last thing I wanted to say, having the chance to work in a hub, uh, because we are very careful about building hubs. Hubs are totally independent. So you can create your own hub in, in Romania and manage it the way you like. But we will give you allowance only if we know you have a connection with the local Romanian government and there is a commitment. What that means is that the hub, the local hub, will become a table to produce proposals to your government that are listened to because, first of all, you are providing something that is compliant to GAIX. Second, you are part of a large family and everybody in Europe will listen to GAIX. I think that these values, just forget it about all the technology stuff I, 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 tell, I told you, it's quite huge for anyone. And, uh, and the price for doing it is really negligible. So there's not much to do to, to become a member. But ultimately, we needed some, I mean, in order to open the hub in Romania, we need to have uh, some sort of blessing from the Romanian authorities. Is that correct? Or yeah, this is what we, we, we want to make sure this happens. Otherwise, you will not succeed if the local government is not interested. But to be honest, let, let's be honest, uh, the 750 million Europe invested uh, in recovery funds, 20% minimum have to go in digital transformation. Now, the rest is about 
digital transformation of other sectors, let's be honest. So there is a lot of money. The problem will be how to spend those money. I don't see any problem. I have not met yet any government that has not the same initiative of digital transformation and they're desperately looking for something like a sovereign technology implementation. So we are seen as a, a common denominator and, uh, and actually we are bringing some light into this age where there's a lot of money, but it's not clear how to spend them. Yep. There, there is a, one of my colleagues asked is uh, if there will be an API uh, available, uh, you know, publicly, but I guess uh, is more than needed for an API. So there, are yeah, there will be a lot of, yeah, there will be a lot of APIs. There will be a set of yes. uh, open source components, etc. And, uh, and, and everybody will be able to deliver Gaia X service compliant, implementing those open source components that we provide that will contain also the connectors to those uh, immutable, uh, let me say, decentralized architecture that is devoted to the control of the services. So anyone can apply, uh, anyone will be able to use GAIA-X implementing the services. We are not, this is an important thing I didn't say, GAIA-X ASBL, the Association Internationale Sans Bute Lucrative, is not a commercial we are not going to deliver any service. We are not going to be competitive. We're not running into any type of uh, in, uh, conflict of interest. We are enabling this next generation of cloud for our members, of course, first, and for the rest of the world, provided they adopt the standards, the components, and they decide to be certified and labeled through our mechanisms. And in this way, we will, we will have something that is not controlled by us, but it will be controlled by a distributed organization. You know that these models like in the blockchain are becoming pretty novel, but just a few years ago, they, they would not even conceivable. Francesco Bonfiglio, thank you very much for being with us today. It was a real honor and privilege to have you here. And I hope next time we will meet you again. Uh, Romania will be on your uh, a hub on, on the GAIAX project. Thank you. I, I really look forward and you know how to reach out to me. Thank you again for inviting me and look forward to being maybe in Romania. I hope so. I will be present in person if you decide to open a hub, promise. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you take care.